All right, Shalom, Israel, all the Israelites around the world, Jews and Gentiles. It's important that brothers and sisters be wise as serpents and harmless as doves uh, at this time. I'll read a few scriptures. I'll start with Proverbs 19 and 16. It says, He that keepeth the commandments, the law, keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth, that means hate his ways, shall die. We need to leave the pagan holidays alone. And come back to the most high power. All right. So let's go to um, Psalms 46 and 10. Right. Psalms 46 and 10 reads, Be still and know that I am the most high. It says, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted high in the earth. The most high of hosts of armies is with us. The God, the most high of Jacob, of Israel, is our refuge. He's our protection. All right. Now let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs thirteen thirteen and twenty one. It said it says evil pursue of sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid, rewarded. So what looks to be for your harm will turn out to be for your good, right? Let's go to Proverbs 18 and 21, all right? Death and life are in the power of the tongue and the mouth, and they that love it will eat the fruit of it, all right? So we have the power to speak life or death. Um, it's very important that we use the power of the tongue that we have uh, when we get into certain situations and circumstances against the other nations, whoever they may be, whoever they may be, Edom or uh, our own people. We need to go into prayer and using the power of the tongue. We can speak life or death. Okay, that's to anyone, any foe, any enemy. All right, we have the power. Go to second. All right. So we go into Second Corinthians 10 and 3. Three reads, for though we walk in the flesh and the body, we do not war after the flesh, after the body. For the weapons of war of our warfare are not carnal, they're not physical, but mighty through the most high to pull to pulling down of strongholds right? and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of the Most High, Ahia, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yeshua, Christ, the Holy One of Israel. All right. So, we're going from there to Psalms. No, we're going from there to Genesis. Let's go to the beginning. Right. 
Genesis 12. So we war with the spirit. And so we should be able to pray and use our prayer as warfare. All right. And be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And we ain't have to, we don't need to go marching, we don't need to go looking to war and fight against people. All we have to do is pray. Even though sometimes in the war it's gonna get physical. But still we gotta be spiritual to win this battle in Babylon or against any other other nations. Again, uh, Genesis 12 and 3. It says, And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Right? Through the children of Israel. Alright. Let's go to Exodus 23, 22. Exodus 23, 22. But if you shall indeed oh. obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto them, I mean unto thine enemies, to your enemies, and an adversary, an enemy unto thy adversaries. I'm going to read it in the Hebrew. It says, I will afflict them that afflict thee. So he's going to trouble thee, them that afflict us, our ch the children of Israel, right? All right, anybody that's following the Most High, he's saying that he's going to afflict their enemies that afflict them. As long as we're following and obeying his voice, not doctrines of men, but the Most High's voice through Christ. All right. From there, his room. Go to Psalms 83. Psalms 83. Right. Right. Psalms 83. It says, Keep not your silence, O Most High. Hold not your peace. And be not still, O Most High Power. For look, thine enemies make a tumult and make a noise. And they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. They have taken crafty advice against thy people, the children of Israel. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation of people. That the name of Israel, which is Yashara'la, may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, with one heart, one mind. They are confederate against thee. And we can go down all the houses that are confederate against the Most High and his children. All right. I'll name a few. Edom. The Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagarines, Gebel, Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines, all right, and so forth. All right. So they have took a crafty counsel against the children of Israel, all right. They said the black Hebrew Israelites are extremists. All right, first thing is we are the children of Israel, 
They just so happen to be brown people. He ain't black like a crayon. Hebrew. That name was Eber, one of our forefathers. All right. All down to Abraham, to Jacob and Isaac. All right. We are the children of Israel. The blacks, the Native Americans, and the Latinos, of African descent. Alright. And we ain't talking about no Egyptian. We definitely not from the family of Ham. We are from Shem. The blessed and chosen seed. Alright. We're supposed to be to a light for the Gentiles. So any Gentiles out there that choose not to serve Satan and choose to serve the Most High and His Son, Christ, they can be grafted in. All right. So our hope is for all Israel to be saved. It says in the scriptures, Israel will be saved with an everlasting salvation. But not all Israel is Israel. There's some Israelites that are some wicked Israelites. All right? So not everybody that says Shalom is your brother or sister. Those that are keeping the law, statute, and commandments, those are your brothers and sisters. Right. They're following Christ and have been baptized. All right. So we read Psalms 83. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Psalms of Solomon. We're gonna go to the Psalms of Solomon. All right. Psalms of Solomon, seven, chapter 17, verse 1, says, O Most High, you are our king forever and ever. For in you, O Most High, doeth our soul glory. How long are the days of man's life upon the earth? As are his days, so is the hope set upon him. For we hope in the Most High our deliverer, our savior. For the might of our power, the most high, is forever with mercy. And the kingdom of our power is forever over the nations in judgment. You, O most high, did choose David to be king over Israel and swear to him, touching his seed, his children, that never should his kingdom fail before thee. But for our sins, sinners rose up against us. They assailed us, they attacked us, and thrust us out. What you had what you had not promised to them, they took away from us with violence. They in no wise glorified your honorable name, Ahaya Asha Ahaya, or Iye. They set a worldly monarchy in place of that which was their excellency. They laid waste, emptied the throne of David in tumultuous arrogance. But you, O Most High Power, did cast them down and remove their seed from the earth. We're going to jump down to verse 20. For there was none among them that done righteousness and justice. From the chief of them to the least of them, all were sinful. The king, the president, was a, tr a transgressor, a lawbreaker, and the judge disobedient, and the people sinful. Behold, O most high power, and raise up 
rise up unto them their king, the son of David, that is Yeshia, at that at the time in which you see us, O Most High, that we may rule over Israel, your servant, and gird him with strength, with power, that he may shatter unrighteous rulers, presidents, governors, and that he may purge Jerusalem from nations, from people that trample her down to destruction. Wisely, righteously, he shall thrust out sinners from the inheritance. He shall destroy the pride of the sinner as a potter's vessel. With a rod of iron, he shall break in pieces all their substance. He shall destroy the godless nations, people, with the word of his mouth. At his rebuke, nations, people, shall flee. They're going to run before him. And he shall reprove sinners for the thoughts of their heart, their minds. And he shall gather together a holy people, which are the children of Israel, whom he shall lead in righteousness. And he shall judge the tribes of the people that has been sanctified, that means set apart by the Lord, his God, the most high power, Ahia. And he shall not suffer, he shall not allow unrighteousness to sleep or lodge anymore in, a, in their midst, in the middle of them. Nor shall there dwell live with them any man that knoweth wickedness, for he shall know them that they are all the sons of their God, of, of, of the Most High, the sons of the Most High. All right. So from Psalms of Solomon, we're going to go to Zephaniah. Let's get Zephaniah. Let's see what Zephaniah has to say. So, well, let me just start off with saying we need to gather ourselves together, O nation, not desired. Okay, we got to come together, put our differences aside, and come to a conclusion. And just praise the Most High because we're going to be saved out of Jacob's trouble, right? We're going to go through it, but we're going to be saved. So gather together with those that are on one accord, all right? Not unevenly yoked, but I'm saying gather together and be on one accord. And I mean all Israel. All the leaders should be gathering together with the knowledge and uh, the gifts that they have and using their gifts and coming together to help the people and praise the most high power, Ahaya, or whatever you want to call them, the creator. All right. So Zephaniah 3. Uh, verse 8. All right. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Most High, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination, his plan is to gather the nations, the people, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, his anger. Even all he says, my fierce anger for all the earth will be devoured. All the earth is going to be consumed with the fire of the most high jealousy. All right. And then it says in verse nine, for then will I turn, I mean, change to the people a pure, a clean language. All right. A clean lip, mouth, tongue, that they may all call upon the name of the Most High, 
to serve him with one consent. That means with one mind. Everybody's going to come together. One consent, one heart. That means one mind. All right. Now, again, he's going to let out his uh, furious indignations. He's going to pour it uh, upon the wicked kingdoms on the earth. All right. On the complete earth, anyway. So now we go on to second Ezra. No, we going to um, we going to go to Enoch actually. Let's go to Enoch real quick. Enoch one and nine. That's what we going to do. Enoch one and. Go to Enoch 1 and 9. And it says, And behold, he cometh with 10,000 of his holy ones, all right, to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh, that means all body, of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed, and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him against the most high all right that's what he's gonna do we're gonna go back to that so you can hold it we get So Jude, um, Jude one fifteen, it says um, to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, actions which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which they which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. All right. And these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. All right. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Yeshia, right? Uh, Yahawashai, Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last times, in the end days, who shall walk after their own ungodly lusts. All right. So remember, Israel, to keep yourselves in the love of the Most High and look for the mercy of the Most High. Okay, so let's go to uh, Second Ezra's, or well, yeah, we're going to go to Second Ezra's, but. Um, Revelation 1 and 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, all right? And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall cry because of him. Even so, say la. So he's coming with 10,000 of his angels, all right? And judgment has been given to Christ, all right? And he's going to put the Most High's enemy under his foot under his feet all right he's gonna make his enemies his his footstool all right so we're going to second ezra let's get that second ezra 13 
13 and 3. And it says, and I beheld, he says, I see, I looked, and I saw that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, with the clouds of heaven. And when he turned his face to look, all things shaked or trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth fell when it fit, when it fleeth the fire. And after this, I behold, and I saw there was gathered together a crowd or a multitude of, of men out of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven, the sky to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I behold, I looked and I saw he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where, where out the hill was graven and I could not. And after this, I saw and I looked all they which were gathered together to take him were sore afraid. They were scared. And yet they still fought, fought against Yeshua Christ. And look, as he saw the violence of the crowd that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword or any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out his mouth. As it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest storms. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the, and the great tempest storm. And, and it fell with violence upon the crowd which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable crowd, nothing was to be perceived, nothing was left, but only dust and smell of smoke. Woo, I saw this. I was afraid after I saw the same man came down from the mountain and called unto him an, an other peaceable multitude. And there came much unto him whereof some were glad and some were sorry, some of them were bound, and others, some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awaked and said, You have showed your worker wonders from the beginning, and have counted me worthy that you should receive my prayer. Show me now the interpretation of the dream. For I, as I conceive in my understanding, woe unto them, that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them, danger, that are not left behind. For they that were not left were in heaviness, depression. Now understand I the things that are laid up in the last days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Therefore are they come into great dangers and many necessities, like as these dreams announce. Still, is it easier for him? It is easier for him that is in danger to come into this day than to pass away as a cloud um, out of the world. Okay, there's not going to be a rapture like you think, and not to see the things that happened in the last days and end times. And he answered unto me and said, The interpretation of the dream or the vision I will show you, and I will open unto you the thing that you had asked, whereas you have spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the danger in that time have kept himself. They that be that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith towards the Almighty Ahia. Now this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. This is the meaning of the vision, whereas you saw if a man coming up from the middle of the sea. The same is he whom the Most High, the highest, hath kept a great season, time, which by his own self shall save his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas you saw that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the crowd that came to take him. This is the interpretation. Behold, look, the days come 
when the Most High, the highest, will begin to deliver, that means save, them that are upon the earth. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that live on the earth, and one shall undertake to fight against another, and one city against another, and one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. And the time will be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs will happen, which I showed you before. And then shall my son be announced, Yeshia, the Christ, the King, whom you saw as a man ascending and rising. And when all the people hear his voice, every man will in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. That's Armageddon. That's the valley. And an innumerable multitude, size, or crowd will be gathered together as you saw them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, Israel. And Zion, Israel, shall come and will be showed to all men. Being prepared, that means ready and built, like as you saw the hill cut without hands. And this, my son, will rebuke Yeshia, Christ, will correct the wicked inventions, the technology of those nations, those people, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest, the storm, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without work, labor, by the law, by the law, by the commandments, which is like unto fire. All right. So Christ is coming and he's coming to make war. He's not coming on a donkey, on an ass. He's coming to make war with the nations. And all that is wicked, he's coming with 10,000 and 10,000 of his angels. And you better understand it. You better acknowledge it. So we're going back to Enoch. Uh, chapter 1, verse 9. All right. And it says, And behold, he cometh with 10,000 of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all, to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed, and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Who have spoken against him? All right. Evil doers. All right, so I'm going back. I'm going to Isaiah uh, 48 and 22. It says, There is no peace, save the Most High, unto the wicked. There is no peace, save the Most High, unto the wicked. Let's go to Isaiah uh, 57 and 21. 57, verse 21. There is no peace, saith the most high power, to the wicked. All right. So they got crafty counsel going against the children of Israel. And I'm telling you guys right now, we ain't got to worry. Don't get physical. Don't get carnal. Do be an example you're created in the most high's image, so you're created in the most high son's image also. And so you have the power to speak life or death. And he said that he will afflict your enemies that afflict you. So you're able to bless those that you want. You can bless. You can curse those that you want. You can curse. You have that power. You have the power to speak life or death. And so a lot of times I don't see us uh, calling on the name of the Most High. Whatever name you call them, I don't see that happening in the time of trouble. 
can see a lot of our brothers and sisters getting shot by these cops with things screaming and, and, and asking the most high to protect them in that split second that they are not thinking they're trying to get carnal and that that don't work in babylon all right so stay spiritual stay prayed up so back to enoch it's uh, <clears throat> to enoch okay we're gonna finish um Chapter 2, it says, Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven. Watch everything that takes place in the sky. That's what it's actually saying. How they do not change their orbits. All right. And the luminaries which are in the heaven, in the sky. Okay. How they all rise and set in order each in its season, each in its time. So, um, how they do not change, okay? All, t all the tasks um, change not. That means all his works serve him and change not. All the Most High's works serve him and change not. All right? Um, let me go back. It says, uh, and the luminaries which are in the heaven and the sky, how they all rise and set in order, each in its season, and transgress not. That means they break not the law. Okay. They transgress not against their appointed order. They stay in order. That's what Israel needs to do. Stay in order. Anyway, uh, behold ye. The earth, I mean, see the earth and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last. How steadfast, that means focused they are. How none of the things upon earth change. Okay. They change not. But all the works of Ahia appear to you. Okay. They come out to you all right behold the summer and the winter how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they have withered and shed all their leaves except 14 trees which do not lose their foliage but retain the old foliage from two to three years till the new comes and again observe that means watch see ye the days of summer how the sun is above the earth over against it and and you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heat of the sun and the earth also burns with glowing heat and so you cannot tread that means walk on the earth or on a rock by reason of its heat. Observe ye how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit. Wherefore give ye heed and know with regard, respect to all his works, and recognize how he that liveth forever, so that means the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Spirits, have made them so, and all his works, his actions go on. Now, from year to year, forever, and all the tasks, tasks which they accomplish for him. And their tasks change not. But according as the Most High have ordained, so is it done. And behold, look how the sea and the rivers in like manner accomplish and change not their tasks for his commandments, for his laws. But ye, ye have not been steadfast, ye have not been focused, nor done the commandments, the law of the Lord of Spirits or the Ancient of Days. But ye have turned, that means changed away, and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness. O ye hard-hearted, that means hard-minded, 
ye shall find no peace. Again, Isaiah 48 and 22 said, the wicked have no peace, right? No shalom for them. Therefore shall you excrete your days. That means you're going to waste your days and the years of your life will perish, will die. And the years of your destruction shall be multiplied, increased in eternal excretion. That means eternal waste, and ye shall find no mercy, none at all. In those days ye shall make your names an eternal excretion, that means waste, unto all the righteous, unto all the righteous, and by you shall all who curse curse, and all the sinners and godless shall imprecate by you, and for you the godless, there shall be a curse, and all the Israelites shall rejoice. All the children of the Most High shall rejoice. They're going to laugh. They're going to be happy. And there shall be forgiveness of sins, and every, mercy, and every mercy and peace and forbearance. There shall be salvation. That means protection unto them. A goodly light. And for all of you, of you sinners, there shall be no salvation. There's going to be no protection. All right. There's going to be none. Okay. But on you, all shall abide, shall abide a curse, live a curse. But for the elect, the chosen, there shall be light and joy and peace. And they shall inherit the earth. And then there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom. And they shall all live and never again sin, either through ungodliness or through pride. But they who are wise shall be humble, and they shall not again transgress, that means break the law, nor shall they sin all the days of their life, nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath, but they shall complete the number of the days of their life, and their lives shall be increased in peace, and the years of their joy shall be multiplied, increased in eternal gladness, happiness, and peace all the days of their life. All, right. all the days of their life. Now, go on to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah 5. I mean, I'm sorry. Isaiah 49, verse 5. And now, saith the Most High Power, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, his worker, to bring Jacob, that means Israel, again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, or, or it says, uh, though Israel be not gathered, that Israel may be gathered to him, to the Most High, the Ancient of Days. And I may be glorious in the eyes of the Most High, Ahiah. And my power shall be my strength, and my God will be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing. And or in the Hebrew it says, and he said, Are you lighter than that you shouldest be my servant, my worker? Is it a light thing that you should be my servant, my worker, to rise up the tribes of Jacob, that's Israel, and to restore, to bring back the preserved of Israel, the desolations of Israel? Hmm. It says, I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles, right? The unbelievers, the other nations, that you mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Now saith the Most High, the Ancient of Days, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, which is Christ, to him that despised and sold. 
to to him whom man hated hmm. and so to him whom the nation hated to a servant of rulers kings shall see and arise princes also shall worship because of the most high that is faithful and the holy one of israel and he shall choose you now saith the most high the ancient of days in an acceptable time in a chosen time i have heard thee and in the day of salvation protection i have helped thee and i will preserve you he says i will keep you and give you for a covenant agreement of the people to establish to right to rise up the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages that you may have say to the prisoner go out to them that are in darkness show yourselves they shall feed in the ways and then their pastures pastures shall be in in a in in all high places <clears throat> their pastures shall be in all high places they shall not hunger nor thirst neither shall the heat nor sun hit them for he have mercy on them and will lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them and i will make all my mountains away and my highway shall be exalted shall be raised All praises to the Most High, Ahaya. Um, I'm going to end it with uh, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, uh, verse 13. It says, Woe unto him that is faint hearted, that is weak minded, for he believeth not. That means he has no faith. Therefore shall he not be defended. He's not going to be protected. There's no salvation for those that don't believe. And definitely believe that Yeshua is the son of the Most High. That's Antichrist. We believe Yeshua is the Christ, the Savior. All right. Uh, they that fear the Most High will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Most High, the Ancient of Days, will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. And they that love him, the Lord of Spirits, Ahia Asha Ahia, will be filled with the law. Praise the Most High, Ahia. So...